Hi, I'm Mike Hogue of Transformative Adventures, and uh, I'd like to show you around my new project site, my new home garden. Now, I've been around this permaculture thing about 20 years, and I've had a lot of home gardens. My last main garden site was at Lily House Permaculture, which was another urban site, about an acre in Kalamazoo, Michigan, with about 300 species of edible and medicinal plants, all arranged in largely self-maintaining guilds, as you see here. And it grew a huge percentage of the household uh, produce and a hypothetical complete diet throughout the year uh, on just a few hours of work per week on average. In addition to meeting our human needs, the site was an amazing wildlife and native plant habitat as well. Now this new garden is going to be quite different in that it's only a tenth of an acre, and yet it's going to accomplish a lot of the same goals. Two things I'd really like to show off here are one, how much we can do in a very small space, and two, how fast we can do it in even just a very short time, even just a few months, in a small space, we can do a whole lot. So let's go check it out. So here's the backyard garden. And the goal for this space was to provide a, a nice place to be in, to grow a whole lot of food, and to provide a basic sort of nursery for me to restart doing a local uh, landscape transformation program off the Lily House model that I developed. So when I moved in, there were a few uh, ornamental plants already planted in over here. Some other things we'll talk about in a minute. But for the most part, it was an empty slate. It had been really destroyed by the resident dog. So now you see one of the first things I did was create a dog run. So the dog has some place to be. Um, it doesn't have dog crap all over anymore. And the dog hasn't torn up everything here. Um, so you can see it's a mix of some sheet mulching uh, to make some paths and uh, some places where resident vegetation have just been left and planted into and a little bit of light clearing of some resident vegetation that was sketchy because of the dog and uh, so then a scatter sown polyculture of uh, some of my favorite vegetables you can find out about that by searching for the term scatter sown vegetables at uh, transformativeadventures.org and uh, that's a great way to transform a huge space really quickly. On the other side over here, there's more shading from the black walnuts that are here. So this side was more of a black walnut tolerant uh, selection of uh, mostly native uh, medicinal and edible plants. So those were sheet mulched and then planted into it leaving some of the resident vegetation and overall it's become really quickly a whole bunch of dense foodscape and it's both beautiful and it's been producing a salad every day for <laughs> and food for rabbits and food for stir fries and all sorts of other stuff and sautés um, every day for a month and a half now small site very small urban backyard tenth of an acre site but even in an area like this we still have room for some grassy, half-wild, edible meadow areas. This one has a lot of native monardas. It has uh, Jerusalem artichokes and mints and uh, valerian, marshmallow, and sunflowers, some brassicas coming in, and uh, all sorts of other goodies all tucked in. And here, you know, I just planted these things right into the resident vegetation. It's on a little slope. I don't want to destroy that slope or disturb it and cause erosion. So I just planted it into it with some things that I know will actually defeat that lawn and remove that lawn 90% for me in within the first season. Okay, from back here, you can see one of the main vegetable production areas they'll have access to here. And this has that scatter sown polyculture that's going to transition to mixed annuals and perennials. Taking a closer look in here, there is uh, my own Landris Grandpa Myers based uh, butter lettuce, borage, um, garlic, 
arugula salad crust, which is one of my absolute favorites, shungiku, um, walking onions, and a few other things. Some fennel bulbs in there that, are, that have been selected, some that have been already harvested, and some herbs that are black walnut tolerant planted into here. And on this side is the wonderfully uh, creepy <laughs> woodland polyculture. Uh, this is kind of my classic go-to eastern woodland polyculture of uh, variegated Solomon seal, ostrich fern, wild ginger, ramps, um, got some great uh, nice eating yellow bellflower in there, a nice native plant, several other things. Uh, Here's one of the wee baby pawpaws. Excited to see my friends, the pawpaws, uh, starting out on my new garden site. Being under black walnut and in full shade and a downtown urban backyard garden, one of the other first things I did was plant in a variety of my favorite currants, including this clove currant. These are shade tolerant and produce some great fruit. Now, of course, I planted them all in with guilds. You see again some uh, um, miner's lettuce coming in around them and ladies mantle and uh, ostrich fern into the background there. You see my sunchokes, potatoes, an interesting yarrow. Here's my buddy. Um, got some chives in there. That sea kale that we're trying on the jug loan, um, edible columbine. So lots of neat stuff going on in a very small space. So this garden has uh, several very interesting opportunities. And one of them is behind me here. And that's that there was uh, an old Japanese knotweed patch. People used to plant it in cities, uh, tied their neighbor's garbage and stuff. I am going to kick this knotweed's butt not with glyphosate, but with plants. So I've already planted in, this starts one of my Terminator guilds, and I believe that this guild will uh, outcompete the Japanese knotweed, along with doing some crimping of the knotweed to give the plants I'm establishing a heads up. So this site is pretty cool because it, it is also right up to a bike trail and an alley that's on the river, which means I am again contiguous to a whole lot of parkland and there's some really cool things going on in the parks too. So once you jump the wall, then on this side, one of the first things you'll see is this nice row of trees and they're all service berries. Absolutely one of my favorites. On the other side of the bike trail, there are a lot of shagbar kickeries, one of my favorite nuts. And here is the front yard garden. Now the goals for this are one, we want it to be this wild, quirky, fun uh, space that's really cool and also great advertisement for permaculture. And two, we want it to be super productive, a high productivity space for foods that are appropriate to an urban front garden. Like all of my gardens, you see a mix of ornamentals and edibles, perennials and annuals, and of different implementation strategies. Slash mulch, cheat mulch, uh, planting right into some existing uh, ornamental gardens that were already there, and a little bit of digging, all integrated in together. And this is just a few months into the first season of this garden. I can't wait to show you what it looks like by mid-season. This is one of the big things that I have learned, is that the real permaculture is not about focusing on sites. We fetishize sites too much, and site development is an important part of what we do. But the real permaculture, the thing that can't be taken away from us, is what we take away. For me, it is the skill of knowing that I can transform a landscape and in just five months have established something that already has probably paid back the investment of plants that I've put into it and will continue to be profitable and produce vegetables for the rest of the season uh, from here on out practically. 